Good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock. We're going to get started. My name is Stephanie Warkup, and I am the elementary school academic dean. We are here with Miss Sevilla, who is our lead kindergarten teacher, who will share information this evening. But we also have our principal here, Mr. Cara, who would like to welcome everyone. So I'm going to allow him to talk. Uh, Mr. Carr, you just got moved. Hold on one second in the list. There we go, Mr. Carr. All right, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, we can. Turn on my video. Can I turn on my video or is it not possible? Uh, it's okay. I think there's no video. Yes, uh, I would like to, uh, you know, welcome everybody uh, for this endeavor. And, you know, uh, it's going to be something big for you guys, whether it, uh, it is at our school or at another place from kindergarten through you know, all middle school, high school, and uh, the college, uh, throughout all of those years, you will see your uh, youngsters grow. And we would like to host them at our school. And we are hoping to have, uh, you know, everybody, but, uh, you know, we have some limited uh, seatings. Uh, so we're, I'm wishing you luck uh, and the best fit for your child. Uh, thank you very much again for applying uh, from uh, the principal, John Cara. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Cyril, it's yours. Welcome, everyone. So my name is Janine Sevilla, and I am the one of the kindergarten teachers here at TMSA. Um, I have been teaching kindergarten at TMSA. This is my seventh year. And I have two kids that go to TMSA as well. I have a sixth grader and a third grade boy. It is my son's birthday today. So my husband's picking up dinner so I don't have to cook. So he's pretty excited and so am I. So I can be here for you. So I just wanted to go through some information about our kindergarten um, program at TMSA. And then if you have questions, um, we will do a Q&A at the end and you can ask and we can answer as best we can. As you know, right now, the world is kind of turned upside down, especially in the school setting. So I'm going to tell you what our school looks like previous to this year and what it possibly could look like next year. As we know, this is very subject to change, um, but this is just kind of a typical look at what our kindergarten looks like and what we're hoping it will look like again next fall. So again, all of this is subject to change. Um, but I just want to kind of give you a, an idea of what it will be like. Currently, we have three kindergarten classrooms. In each kindergarten, there is 20 students, and we do have a TA as well that helps us throughout all the day. Um, I wanted to go ahead and start with a virtual tour. So right now, we are not currently in our building. We are all teaching virtually, and the kids are all learning virtually. They're doing an amazing job. <laughs> so as of now, our school is not open. So we are under Plan C, and that is what our board has chosen for us. In the spring, if we do open, there will be a chance then if you get into our school to do a virtual tour, um, to maybe see some of our kindergarten classrooms and stuff like that. So that can be coming in the spring, but right now all we have is virtual. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on our virtual tour and you'll just get a little glimpse of what it looks like. Who is bigger? Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm still learning all my technology, as you can see. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was all queued up. Well, we might let the download and go on a virtual tour in a minute. <laughs> all right, we'll come back to that and go on a virtual tour in a minute. So a typical day in kindergarten, I just kind of want to run through it. We start our day at eight o'clock in the morning and we end at three. Um, we start the day with just some typical morning work, morning bins, let them come in, kind of get settled, let everybody put their coats away in kindergarten. It always takes a little longer to figure out where all of our stuff goes and a little more um, independence and a little more organization. So we do give them a little bit of time to do that. At about 8.20, we'll jump into a calendar and morning meeting time. We like to greet all the students. We like to ask a question of the day so they can all talk to us and then go through our calendar, what's going on, the month, the seasons, different things like that. 
After that, we will start our um, reading program. Um, we usually do some kind of story as a whole group to read together, and then we pick out different parts of it to teach, whether that's story elements or nouns and verbs or um, characters and setting, all those different things we'll read through all together. After we've done a whole group session, we usually get into our reading groups. That is when the kids are split up more by either academic needs or academic abilities. So throughout the year, we switch our groups around and we either will put all the kids that can kind of read a little bit higher level books together and we'll read a little higher level books or we'll group them by abilities. So these kids are working on syllables. We're gonna pick out some books that they can read and do syllables. While I am polling small groups, I will have a TA and she'll be polling small groups as well. And then the kids will be doing other independent reading activities during that time as well. We then move to either social studies or science. We do one each day or flip-flop by the week, depending on what we're learning. Um, social studies is we do a lot of holidays. We do a lot of um, different geography and different things like that. With our science, we have um, a couple main topics. We talk a lot about animals, which the kids always enjoy. And we talk a lot about weather. So those are kind of our two main ones. Um, very things that are applicable to the children. Then the kids will take a quick recess. Uh, they have two recesses a day, about 20 minutes. And then they will have lunch back in our classrooms. For recess, we do have a playground. And once we get to the virtual tour, I'll show you that, um, that the kids can play on and to get out all their wiggles for us. We come back in, we have a short writing time. We do work right now with my kindergartners. We're working on writing a whole sentence from beginning to end, starting with a capital letter, putting our finger spaces in, and then a period at the end. So that's kind of where we are. We don't start there, but that's where we are right now. Um, so we do practice a little bit of writing each day. Then we have our specials times. Every day is a different special, so we have five different specials. Um, PE, where they'll get to go to the gym and play. We have a computers, where our computer teacher will come. She has a cart that she brings into the classroom, and they all get to do on the computers. Um, they do do a lot on the computers. They introduce some coding, some typing. They're very, very good on that. We have an art teacher and she'll be doing all different art projects with them. And then one day we have a music teacher who comes in, he's wonderful, he sings songs and does rhythms and they love that. And then our last special is STEM. So um, part of our um, triangle math and science academy that we do, STEM is different science, technology, engineering and mathematics. And we do have a specials teacher that comes in every week. She does amazing projects with them where they create things. They go through the design process. Um, it's one of the specials that they really enjoy. So that's kind of an extra bonus that the kids really like. After specials, we'll have our math time. We usually do some kind of whole group lesson and then usually smaller group math centers um, where I can work with kids who are either a little bit advanced in math or are little ones that need help. Um, and then they get to play a lot of games during this time with each other, just learning basic math facts and number sense. They really enjoy that. We do have our second recess. Um, as you can see, we do not have a nap time. We found that the kids usually have more energy than a nap time requires. So they, we let them go run around for a couple of times outside. Um, and then we end our day with centers. We usually do a bunch of different centers during this time. Um, and it also gives me a chance to work with the kids that may need a little additional help or the ones that are a little semi-high flyers, I can go a little farther on that time. That is a time where they can do some um, building and different things like that. When you do, when we do go through our virtual tour, you will see that our classrooms do not have a lot of play centers like you might see um, at some of the different Wake County schools. Um, we do do like, like I said, a lot of building during that time, a lot of um, blocks, Legos, games, all of that different kind of stuff. Um, but it's not like a play center like you might see. So we are a very academic kindergarten, a very academic school. As you can see by our day, it is jam packed. It is fun, but it is learning. Um, so that's kind of what a typical day would look like. 
Um, so for center time, it's usually just a lot of different things put into one. So like I said, they'll have building centers, they'll have game centers, we'll do some reading, we'll do some math. Um, and then it gives me time to work um, in small groups as well. So there are three small group times that built into our day just to kind of help the kids with those um, extra things they might need. Or like I said, our high flyers can go a little above as well. Um, looks like our virtual tour might be ready. I'm gonna wait on that <laughs> and keep going. When we do start our kindergarten, once you are entered into the lottery, the lottery will be uh, February 15th. They will choose the first 60 students that get in. Um, and then once you get in, you will let them know that you do want your child to come to kindergarten at TMSA. And we start with a staggered entry process in August. So that means each day we'll have just a couple of our kindergartners, usually only about 20 out of the 60 will come and they'll get to meet each of us teachers. We'll give them some very basic assessments. We'll get to meet them. We'll get to see how they play and interact with each other. Um, and then once we go through staggered entry, we kind of look at all the kids and their abilities and their personalities and where we think some of the best fits might be through that quick staggered entry process. And then after that, you will receive an email with your child's placement, with which teacher they have, um, and then we will start our day after that. I do know a lot of Wake County schools do this as well. It's just a great way to kind of get to know the kids a little bit better. So we will start with our staggered entry process in August. So a lot of you here, I'm sure, are looking at your Wake County base schools, and you are also looking at charters, and there's magnets. There's so many great choices, which is one of the reasons I love North Carolina, is you can kind of fit the school that works for you and your family and for your child. So I just want to kind of give you an idea of where we kind of differ from Wake County um, and then some of the similarities as well. So we are a charter school. We have three schools. We have the one in Cary here, we have one in Charlotte, and then we have one in Greensboro. We have a board that is over all three schools and a central office that is over all three schools. And they are the ones that are kind of our driving force making decisions. They do the budget, um, curriculum, different things like that, guiding our three schools. It is really nice because the board members, central office, they come into the building, they know me, I know them. Um, so it is more of a personal interaction that we have with them. We are a smaller group as opposed to like Wake County where you know, your superintendent, you're probably not gonna see very often. So we do have personal interactions with them, which is great. It makes it more like a family environment. Um, we do offer busing, which is if you're in Wake County, you will get free busing, but it is an additional cost to parents. So you can get a bus, but you do have to pay extra for it. The buses will not come to your house. They go to a parking lot. So like they'll pick a Harris Teeter where a bunch of families live. They'll go to the Harris Teeter. They'll pick up all the kids there and drive them from the Harris Teeter parking lot to our school. So busing is a little different, but it is nice because if you do live farther away, you just have to drive to that parking lot. You don't have to drive all the way to school. So we do have kids from Pittsburgh and Durham and all over that do come to our school. And then we have carpool as well, if you do not want to choose to do busing. Um, another thing is we do have a catered lunch, but it is an additional cost. We don't have free and reduced lunch at this point. Um, so you can either pay for the catered lunch or you can bring a lunch from home. So another way we're a little different. The way that we are the same is that we are in the state of North Carolina and we have to teach the standards just like any other quote school in North Carolina. So the state standards that North Carolina has set, those are the standards that we go by. And those are the standards that we teach in every classroom, um, just like you would in any other school. So those are some similarities and differences for our school versus another school you might be looking at. Um, as I said, we do have a pretty academic kindergarten as well as school. We do expect children to be able to sit down and write. It is not a long time that they have to write and I do not make them do a lot of writing, but I do expect some writing. We do do some worksheets. Um, like I said, we have a lot of other things too, but they do have to sit down at some point and be able to do that. 
We do give homework in kindergarten. Um, it's not a lot, but again, just a little bit to kind of get them ready for all the different grades that they will have and the homework that will be coming. So just to get them in the habit of doing homework at night. Um, usually we just give out a weekly math sheet that they have to complete. And then we do ask that you guys read to them. Um, once the kindergartners can learn, are learning how to read, you know, they would love to read more to you. And then always kids love it when parents read to them. So we do encourage nightly reading and do do reading logs through that. Our grading method is a standards-based grading. Um, what that means is that in each subject, those standards that North Carolina has asked us to teach, we then will assess the children and see if they can meet those. So for example, one of the easiest ones is by the end of kindergarten, the state of North Carolina asks that each kindergartner know how to count from one to 100. If they can do that, they will get a three on their report card. If they can't make it all the way to 100, they're getting close, then they will get a two. And if they're still really struggling with that one to 100, they will get a one. Now the standards are year long. So I don't expect the kids to come in knowing how to count to 100. We work on it all year and then by the time we leave, that is when we do expect them and the state of North Carolina expects them to count to 100. So you will see that on our report cards. And then we do have some work habits and conduct that we put on our report card as well because it is academic, but we know that there's so much more to a kid than just academics. There's how they behave and how they conduct themselves. So we do look for their characteristics of a successful learner. We're looking for, the, are they following the rules? Are they kind? Um, all those different things, um, which is something we talk about a lot <laughs> in kindergarten, especially. Um, so that is on our report card as well. Very high on the academics, but we know that's not the whole child. So um, we have, Last year had our first graduating class at TMSA. The 12th graders made it all the way through. Um, so our administration has put together some things that have the kids that have been very successful at TM TMSA. Um, we do have a pretty, as I said, academic school. So learning independently, um, having motivation, a strong worth work ethic are all things that will really help your child succeed really anywhere, but that's um, some of our most successful students. Um, we do have an accelerated pace for math and science. It will uh, hit once they hit third grade and they can go on from there. Within the classroom K-2, it is just, it is not an accelerated program. It is just a whole group program. So that starts in third grade. Um, and we do have lots of extracurricular activities starting in kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. And we do have wonderful students that have gone on to different colleges and getting accepted to more every day. This last slide that I like to put in here is for you, no matter where your child goes to kindergarten. There are wonderful kindergarten teachers that I know all throughout the state, many in Wake County that I think are just fabulous. Um, People always ask me, what should my child know before they hit kindergarten? Should they write their name? Do they know their letters? I always say self-help skills are number one for me. My job is to teach them academics. If they can come in and they know how to go to the bathroom and zip up their coat and tie, not always tie their shoes, but be able to keep their shoes on. <laughs> tie their shoes would be a huge bonus, but keep their shoes on. Um, open up their lunchbox, get everything out, put away their coat. Those kind of things will help me and help them so much more than all the academics. Um, following directions, being respectful, knowing how to listen to a story, that's a huge thing. We read so many stories in kindergarten and the ones that can sit and listen and follow along and get are so engaged in it, they are gonna fly through their academics. Um, it's great if they know their first and last name. Last name's key, most kids know their first names, but if they can write their first name, that's wonderful. It is something we will work on. Um, a lot of preschools do teach kids to write their name in all capital letters. Kind of the reverse that I would like to see, we really like them to have the first letter capitalized and then the rest lowercase, like you would see it anywhere. So if your child does know how to do it all capital, that's great. I will help them learn how to do the second part lowercase, but that is something that's always 
right when I see a kid that knows how to write it correctly. A plus. <laughs> um, basic counting, again, we'll work all the way to 100, but can they count to 10 or 20? Those things are great. Um, basic stories, us, uh, basic shapes, sorry, and then storytelling. That's the best. Their imaginations are so great. It's one of the reasons I love teaching kindergarten. And the ones that can tell stories and have pictures and they get into those stories, they're just going to go so far. Um, scissors is a big thing if they don't know how that's something we work on, but it's great for our fine motor. Our OT always talks about, you know, your pincer grip and can they pick up things with their finger and their thumb and move things. And so not always cutting and writing, but can they manipulate with their fingers, even doing Legos or something like that that's more fun at home? Just can they use those fine motor skills? Um, and then bonuses, letters of the alphabet, you know, reading, all that kind of stuff. But self-help skills, listening, being respectful, those are number one, no matter where your kid goes. So work on those now, um, and then they will be so much more successful when they go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and... Can you see that, Miss Workup? Okay. Um, let me pause, put us on a little virtual tour. Sorry, how about now? Okay, so we're going to go on a little virtual tour through TMSA. This is the front of the school, and this was last year when we had students there. So this is some of our high schoolers um, hanging out during their lunch break. Um, and so you can kind of see just a quick view of what it looks like. Like I said, our school is currently closed. So this is what we have right now and great memories from last year. So I'm sorry, I was reading a note. <laughs> this is taking you through the high school um, part of our school. So these are the, um, there's a lab over there and the high school section. So this isn't what necessarily the kindergarten classes look like, but it's giving you a tour of the whole thing. Um, so yeah, this is the high school section. This is heading to the gymnasium and the kids do do PE at this point. And then it's gonna head us back down more high school rooms. Off to the right is, is I was gonna say is our cafeteria, but we no longer have that. <laughs> Now we're getting into some of the um, middle school rooms. They do have lockers when they go to middle school. And here's down to our elementary side of the building. So it was Dr. Seuss Weeks. You can see to Seussville. This is the kindergarten first grade hallway. So a lot more colorful. Our playground looks like some of our fourth and fifth graders on that. So just a quick glimpse of um, what our school looks like. Like I said, hopefully this spring, if you do get um, into our school, we can definitely do more. Thank you all very much for coming and we hope to see you in the future. Thank so you, thank have a great evening. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. We hope you get in, we hope to meet your kids and hopefully this information was helpful to you and to give you some answers um, with some of your questions. Um, good luck with everything and thanks for coming so much tonight and spending your evening with us. Good luck with the lottery. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.